C6, C7, and C8 spinal injuries. These vertebrae form the lowest levels of the cervical spine, near the base of the neck, and directly impact muscles in the arms and hands. The C6 and C7 vertebrae are the lowest levels of the cervical spine, near the base of the neck. Injuries to the spinal cord corresponding to these regions of the spine have the potential to impact everything below the top of the rib cage, resulting in quadriplegia. Though they often have better outcomes than higher cervical injuries, they are still considered incredibly severe because more damage is caused to the central nervous system the higher up in the spine the injury occurs. As is the case with any spinal cord injury, the damage is characterized as complete or incomplete depending on the severity. C6 vertebrae. Injury or pressure on the C6 nerve root that exits the spinal column between the C6 vertebrae and C7 vertebrae can directly affect the control of the muscles in the forearms and wrists. The symptoms of a C6 spinal cord injury may be experienced on one or both sides of the body, depending on the extent of the damage. Survivors of injuries at this level may be able to drive modified cars with hand controls. Symptoms of a C6 level spinal cord injury. Patients with spinal cord tissue or nerve damage near the C6 vertebrae often experience a false case of carpal tunnel syndrome. The patient will likely have numbness and or tingling in the fingers, hands, and arms. Paralysis in the legs, torso, and or hands. Inability to control the nerves that impact wrist extension. Inability to control bladder and bowel function. Ability to speak, but breathing may be taxed. C7 vertebrae. The portion of the spinal cord corresponding to the C7 vertebrae communicates with the tricep muscles. A survivor of a C7 spinal cord injury will likely have full neck movement, but may sense tingling and numbness in the hands and fingers, as well as referred pain in the shoulder blade. Symptoms of a C7 level spinal cord injury. Symptoms of a spinal cord injury corresponding to the C7 vertebrae include burning pain in the shoulder blade and or back of the arms, known as the triceps, some ability to extend shoulders, arms, and fingers, but dexterity may be compromised in the hands and or fingers. Lack of control of the bowel and bladder. Breathing again may be taxed, though the patient should not need ventilation. C8 spinal nerve. The C8 level corresponds to the region in which the nerve roots exit the spine between the cervical spines C7 and the thoracic spines T1. There is no corresponding vertebrae for C8. This nerve root is responsible for controlling muscles in the fingers and hands, and injuries to this area have similar symptoms to those at C6 and C7 levels. Depending on the completeness, a C8 injury will lead to paralysis of the legs, trunk, and hands, with patients maintaining shoulder and arm movement. Causes of cervical spinal cord injuries include motor vehicle accidents, falls, trauma, tumors, disease, and birth defects. Injury treatment. Treatment for spinal cord injuries is aimed at retaining as much function as possible while regaining lost function. Several therapy options may be tried to aid in spinal cord damage recovery. Physical therapy is an important part of the recovery. The patient will need to maintain any function not lost by the cord damage, as well as try to regain function. Surgery is done to stabilize the area around the spinal cord damage. The nerves around the damage are decompressed in hopes of relieving some of the symptoms. Fusion is then achieved by fixating the areas in and around the spinal cord damage. Medications such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are implemented to aid in recovering as much motor and or sensory function as possible by reducing the inflammation in the area of the spinal cord damage. Mental therapy is also a very important part of treating spinal cord injury patients. The therapist can help the patient deal with the emotional side of recovery. Spinal cord injuries to the C6, C7, and C8 levels that are treated immediately have the best chance of recovery. 
patients will typically know the extent of the long-term damage within six months of the injury. Learning to deal with the limitations of the injury is a very important part of the recovery phase. Keeping a positive attitude will aid the patient in pushing through surgeries and therapies. For additional information, please continue reading SpinalCord.com.